Hey everyone, this is Valinette of Gold Titans, and welcome to Epic Star Us episode 5. Joining me via Skype is Aeon Knight. Say hello. Hey everyone, sorry I couldn't be there to record with Valinette today. But we're making it work. Um, yes, as best as we can. Yeah. We feel like we're done with the introduction videos, um, so we're going to try and do maybe more shorter videos and in this one we'd like to talk about a few things uh, server population PvP rewards since they've been changed recently and uh, pre-cataclysm events so let's get started with the uh, server population as I mentioned in a previous episode I've been uh, gathering a list of all the guilds on our server Terranus and uh, just on the horde side because there's way too many Alliance people um, and through my research, I found out that 22% of the characters on the server are Horde. And there's only about 14 big guilds. And by big, I mean over 200 members. Now, that doesn't mean there's 200 accounts playing. But, you know, they might have four or five alts in that guild. But uh, not too many Horde super big guilds. Uh, what's your experience with uh, Alliance guilds when you were on uh, Drakthal, Aeon? Well, from my experience, um, the larger guilds were farming like ICC, um, Ruby Ruby Sanctum, trying to get in all the raids and all the achievements. But the, what I noticed is they only have core groups. So they may have like plus 200 you know, members, but it's still that core group that raids and does like things together. So you may get into a big guild and they do 25 mans, but if you're not part of the core, sometimes you kind of get left out. What I noticed, because I got into um, a mini guild that was filled with, you know, a few main people and a bunch of alts, had like over 200 people in it. All it was was they were just running randoms. Then I got into another guild, um, actually got into the guild via Pug um, ICC run, and they, they applauded my uh, Boomkin DPS. And they said that they have a core 10 man that does ICC regularly to farm it and work the strategies. Another core group that will help, like about half the group is fully geared and the other half is still gearing up but, are, but still meet the minimum requirements to do ICC 10. And so they have that and then they have a huge 25 man raid usually on the weekends where everyone's able to get on. So it just varies. But, like, there are quite a few guilds out there on the Alliance side on our server. Just don't know their names off the top of my head because I, I was just, like, trying to find a guild that could help me get into ICC, like, get into the ICC content a little more in depth. So I got as far as um, Cindergosta and Fighting Blood Queen. Um, I still have not, I still have yet to see Lich King. Oh, getting a little bit of lag there. So it looks like uh, guilds on both sides are about the same. The small core group but lots of other people, mostly because people are casual players and they're not on all the time and they're not there with the regular schedule, like a work schedule, to come and raid. So I guess that's why, you know, that core group exists in almost every guild. But, you know, that's what we tried to do with the Gold Titans, get a core group, not have too many people who, you know, are just kind of in the guild to be in the guild, but we still have them, we welcome them, but... You know, we're trying to get just people that we like to hang out with. So that's why, oh, that's why taking a look at everyone on the server just to see where our guild was standing since we're still looking for some raiders. Yeah, like just the past week, Valentine and I picked up like about 16 players that, you know, liked what we were doing with our guild and they were actually in our Pug ICC runs. And if you don't know what Pug is, it's pickup groups where you just pick up people that, you know, you spam trade looking for players to fill in certain spots. And from them seeing how we run our raids, and we try not to discourage other players who are not as experienced, we try to explain the fights that people need explaining, and that <laughs> raids, and how we distribute loot evenly and fairly as possible, despite the craziness that's going on. Yeah, especially in 25 yeah, especially raids. In We're doing pretty good with our guild right now. Um, mostly getting ready for pre-cata. Since Cataclysm starting soon, the arena seasons have ended, and all the PvP reward gear uh, is now available for any 
character, even if you're not on an arena team. So if you have enough honor points, you can buy full Wrathful gear. And since that cap is 4,000, it's a little bit tougher to get honor, because one honor kill is usually one honor point. So you need to kill a lot of uh, Alliance just to get enough. I'm current. I bought a whole bunch of Wrathful, and then bought the rest Relentless with uh, my Justice points since they were being unused. So I'm about 400, 500 honor points away from picking up the Wrathful Gladiators Combat Staff, which is uh, item level 277. It's going to replace my uh, two PVE rating uh, weapons, my uh, Scourge Lord's Baton and uh, my, uh, what was it, Frost Needle? What am I using? Uh, yeah, Frost Needle. So it'll uh, give me two sockets, gem sockets, which would be pretty nice and a whole bunch of haste. So that's what I've been working for since I don't need to be in a 3v3, 5v5 uh, arena team to earn it. I can just buy it. Yeah, and on my Paladin, I've actually gone from Retribution PvP, which is still fun, but I want to try out Holy PvP since you know I was able to get the Wrathful Shield for like 70 honor points since I didn't have to have the rating at this point. And then I was picking up my Relentless gear slowly from trying to do VOA and... And since Justice Point said, like, I, I have no use for it right now, I, I saw the, the uh, Relentless gear up for the same amount as, like, item level 251 TD10 gear. So I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot, see how it is. Um, saw a few videos. Uh, one Paladin that I, I saw that was um, cranking out videos for Holy PvP was Sacred Heels. Um, he's got a YouTube channel. You can look him up. And he's actually pretty, he's actually really, really good at it. So I just wanted to give that a shot and see how it is. I mean, Rhett is still a lot of fun, but I wanted to move into a new direction, trying to see how things will be. I still have my Rhett gear, and I have my Rhett spec all figured out for PvP. But I'm just going to try to give it a shot with Holy, since we got all, we got the ability to buy Wrathful gear without the restriction. For now. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, definitely uh, something to take advantage of before the next arena season starts. And according to the uh, PvP window, it says that um, arena teams uh, will start the second week after contestants are able to reach level 85. So I assume it'll be the second week after Cataclysm launches. Which, in addition, not just arena teams, but uh, rated battlegrounds will be uh, going live. So that'll be something fun to work at, get those PvP titles. Yeah, and it's, it's all not set in stone because, as we all know, with every expansion comes a ton of bugs and fixes that Blizzard's going to need to work through. So most likely, before they can you know, release the arena season and all this Battleground uh, ratings on release the PvP titles, they're probably going to have to go through like a week or two of... Um, bug patches and hot fixes for a lot of the problems we're going to see once Cataclysm is released. But me and Valinette are excited. Yep. One month away, less than a month away. Actually, a month from today. Um, it's November 7th right now, so... Yep, well, four yeah, weeks left. Four. And in that, time, in that time, you should be preparing <laughs> for the launch of Cataclysm. Uh, there's some events going on, world events, that you won't be able to do uh, once Cataclysm is launched, uh, they already did Operation Nomergar and Zalazane's Fall, and they were both removed in Patch 4.0.1, so you can't do them anymore. So if you missed it, I'm sorry, you'll have to look at YouTube to experience it. So don't miss out on the next, or the newest one, the actual pre cata ones, ones, where the elementals the are wreaking havoc all over Azeroth. So the first one you can do is a chain quest with the Earthen Ring. Completing this will give you some lore. Um, you can travel all over Azeroth and fight four types of elementals, fire, wind, water, and earth. And if you defeat all four, you get a feat of strength called Tripping the Rift. It was pretty fun. Yeah, I'm currently working on that right now on my Druid and my Paladin because they're really the only ones I want to get achievements on. So it's definitely something worth going after. Um, those quests, if you're 
um, at a decent level because they don't require too high of a character. I think as long as you're in your high 70s, you'll be okay. You can um, get some good experience from it as well as some free gold. Yep. So it's definitely yep. something looking into, uh, to look into because I totally missed that for my shaman and my priest for the um, Zolazane's Fall and um, uh, the Nomergan. But I, I got to see both and both were actually fun. Um, at the time, my druid was on the Alliance side. So I got to uh, recapture Nomergon and it's it was completely fun for the fact that you were going against a ton of mobs in locations where you remember like questing through or even just going through the instance and just the storyline was just kind of compelling and I did uh, Zolazanes and it was a little tedious because you had to fly around a lot <laughs> but yeah. it, was, it was still good regardless so definitely it's worth checking out um, and like well that said this provides the lore for what where they're going with um, Cataclysm so you'll have a little better understanding versus hopping in from day one and being like, whoa, everything is different. Yeah, and then I was reading on a couple websites that they're planning to release three uh, no, three total parts, and the one right now is part one, tripping the rift, exposing yourself to the four elements, and there's going to be two more parts before it's released. So you should take care of them now before they get removed because, you know, in a year, six months from now, you'll want to be able to say, oh, yeah, I was playing WoW when that happened. And you don't want to go to WoW Wiki or something and read about that event that you missed out on because I've been doing a lot of research with uh, all the old events from Vanilla WoW that I never got to experience because I didn't start till BC. There was one, uh, the Scourge Invasion with the original introduction of Naxxramas which sounded like a whole ton of fun, but I never got to uh, do it because I wasn't playing then. I wasn't playing. Yeah, I totally missed it as well, so I, I feel you on that. So, um, sounds pretty good, uh, our first Skype podcast. So, um, if you guys have comments, uh, please leave them on YouTube or on the blog, and uh, we'll try to address them or answer any questions. And if you guys have any topics for future podcasts let us know and we'll do our best to try to incorporate them yeah and just to clarify these are youtube podcasts so it's not going to be like a lot of the videos that you see on youtube right now where they show a lot of video footage and you kind of have to like listen and follow along in the video at the same time we kind of want to ease into that but first we're going to be doing like straight up podcasts and so we understand it may seem a little boring but really this is meant for you to listen to while you're like gaming yeah yeah and then, and then the reason we did reason podcast we did is because it's just uh, audio, audio and it's easier for us to handle at this point. And that way we'll be able to do more consistent episodes for you guys. That way, if we tried to do video episode every week, uh, we'd be very busy and we would probably end up skipping a lot of episodes. And we kind of want to start out as more consistent and maybe low tech, if you will, and then work our way into more video and uh, everything else. Yeah, because as Valor well said, we're, and as I've said in previous podcasts, we, you know, do this on our spare time, and, you know, we, we do put real life first, and so it's been kind of busy for both him and I, and so if we were to try to crank out video after video, and it's actual, like, video footage, it'll be rough. Like, I've got about five videos I'm working on for my own website and that I'm going to post on the WoW Gold Titans website as well. And it's taking a lot of time because it's editing, it's making sure that what I'm saying is lining up with what's being shown, and then it's uh, it's really like a ton of work. And at the same time, it has to be, you know... Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Well, we're going to end uh, episode five right there. Um, so this has been Epics Are Us with uh, Valinette of the Gold Titans. And this is Anite from the Gold Titans from the Terra server. See you next time. See you next time.